Thank you so much for listening to the Spooky Door Podcast. Before we begin this episode, we just want to say that you can now watch our episodes and not just listen to them. That's right. We're now uploading all our episodes with video content onto our YouTube channel with lots of various topics, such as top tens and more. Of course, we will always maintain our audio form, but now you can watch the episodes. If there is any subject or topic you'd like us to cover, please let us know. Check out thespookydoor.com or search for the Spooky Door Podcast on YouTube. As always, thank you so much for being a listener and we appreciate all the support. Venture into the shadows with hosts Jordan and Ashley as they peel back the veil to reveal in-depth images into a different realm. One of strange events, places, occurrences, phenomena, and sometimes even horror. Join them as they journey through the spooky door. <laughs> Welcome to the Spooky Door. My name is Jordan. With me, of course, is Ashley. Today's guest, we have W. Ralph Walters. He is the creator and host of Painting the Unexplained. He has been a professional artist for almost 30 years. He was also a former illustrator for Paranormal Magazine. Ralph, thank you so much for being on the show. So um, go ahead and explain a little bit about Painting the Unexplained. Um, do you want the short or long version? <laughs> That's a podcast. So it's up to you, man. <laughs> I mean, if it's too long, we're just going to edit it. So. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, when I was a kid, uh, I grew up, I'm 50. I grew up in the 70s and uh, the 70s was a hotbed for this kind of thing. Uh, back then it was Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, uh, uh, Stigmata, Possession, uh, spontaneous combustion. We, it, it's, it's, you'll find that every decade trends a certain kind of, uh, of conspiracy theory. And, uh, so I grew up watching Leonard Nimoy's In Search Of. Uh, I grew up watching the Arthur C. Clarke, um, show, which the name escapes me right now. Excellent show, though. And I was just really interested in all of this. Uh, I've always really wanted this stuff to be real. And as a kid, when you don't know much about it, you can just take it, uh, you can just take it as truth. But as you get older and you start having questions, you find that, that some of these don't ask necessarily pan out. But it never stopped me from wanting it to be real. And you're talking like cryptids, right? In general? Cryptids, uh, cryptids, uh, UFOs, abduction stuff. Uh, any weirdness like that, anything beyond the pale, uh, I've really been interested in. And that kind of faded as I got older until I got that gig at Paranoia Magazine. So which, what is uh, Paranormal Magazine? Paranoia is a, it's a conspiracy theory magazine, and they cover anything from uh, your your typical JFK conspiracy theories to shadow people to Here you go, uh, Jordan, your favorite oh, yeah. shadow the, people. The, shadow the people. underground <laughs> jungle located in the Arctic. Uh, just all sorts of stuff. And they and they got occasionally, they got some amazing people there. Paul Laffley, who is an architect, and uh, I, I think he worked on the original uh, uh, World Trade Center or the Twin Towers, and he submitted a potential design to replace them. He believes that he's been abducted and that he has a tracker in at the uh, embedded in the base of his skull. And he uh, he would write for Paranoia, and it was just some of the most amazing stuff. Uh, they had a guy. Unfortunately, he turned out to be a Trumpanzee, but uh, he was a, a Hispanic ufologist. And I got to illustrate a lot of his work, and uh, it was he was a he was a really good writer. The, my, one of my favorite articles he did was the potential for uh, alien spaceships to accidentally harm the people that they're they're just kind of driving around looking at. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that they, sounds um. Sounds interesting. I like that. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, it's Sunday, a you're bored, you hop in your car, and you just take a spin, and you look out the window. That's kind of how I see the the alien visitation thing. These uh, anymore, you don't really hear about too many abductions. You don't hear about uh, visitation. Simple visitation was a huge thing in the 40s and 50s, where aliens would just show up and say, hi, I'm an alien, and you'd have a conversation with them. 
Here, um, I'm your neighbor. <laughs> exactly. That kind of thing doesn't seem to happen so much anymore. And that, so that's kind of how I see it is they're just they're just driving around. They're having a, you know, a, a, a picturesque drive. I think, and, I think uh, in some aspects, some of that stuff does happen. I think now just people are more afraid of like being called out, like being called crazy and <laughs> crap like that, too. Yeah, That's possible, too. Because like... also with, like, um, social media now, it's like easier to lose your job or, you know, yeah, lose definitely. status right. with definitely. people because like, oh, this person says, this says a wacko. Saying, saying this crazy exactly. stuff. Exactly. But uh, but the, the, there, one of the stories that he told in that article was a gentleman was fishing and it was getting late so he packed up his fishing tackle and this bright light opened up above him and he looks up and there's this craft above him and he's very deer in the headlights he's just standing there gaping at it and it flies off so in a weird trance he just kind of stumbles home and by the time he got home he started to show evidence of slight burn on his skin and as he's describing to his family what happened, his skin starts bubbling up and falling off. And he claims to feel no pain. He doesn't really react to it because he's still in this weird trance. And uh, his ear falls off and lands on his shirt and slides down his shirt. His family's horrified, but he's still very calm. And after telling them what happens, he asks for a glass of water and says he's thirsty. And then he falls on the floor dead because he lost so much of his skin. Wow. That's that, And I got to illustrate He just wanted that. to go fishing. <laughs> and right. Look how that turned out. <laughs> and... Uh, that kind of, it's the visual, it's the folklore yeah. that that really entices me. I like the stories. I'm actually not really concerned with whether or not I think they're real for a couple of reasons. One, Plus, yeah. I'm I'm older now, and I find that unlike when I was younger, I was a stereotypical record store clerk. Um, if you wanted to hear somebody's, uh, or, or if you didn't want to hear somebody's opinion on music, I was there to offer it to you. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's so High fidelity. Point, <laughs> yep. Yes. Uh, you know, I watched that, that movie. In one of the characters in um, Welcome to Night Vale, she's like a record store clerk and like, just like is so superior to everybody else in her taste in music. That's funny. I saw that movie and I was embarrassed. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> oh, holy I shit. Bet. That's me. Oh, so, uh, so I've I've been trying to get away from that. Uh, I understand what opinions actually are, and I don't want the the human primate tends to to feel that theirs is the most important, and that's just the way we're wired. But luckily, we can we can scale that back. We don't have to be driven by that to that ego, and uh, and the less you care about your own opinion, the more you're open to others. And I also have to admit that while I, I may not have believed in a lot of this stuff when I was younger, now I have to say that the reason that, that I didn't was because that hasn't been my experience. Now, I've experienced some odd things uh, that few people have experienced and that, uh, and that the, you couldn't possibly understand unless you were there. Uh, for instance, when I lived in Austin, I watched a 17 year old kid get shot and I watched him die. Mm. Uh, I've been struck by uh, ball lightning. Uh, I actually interviewed somebody recently who didn't even think that existed. A and because lightning? that's their that's their experience. Um, but I mean, I, I feel like that's a perfect example of like not believing something because you've never experienced it. Like exactly, I've never experienced yeah, that, so why just, would I believe it's it? It's the lack of experience. One time on a lot of acid, uh, I ran up to a train. <laughs> that's how you have to note that part. Yeah, that's, like, that's I was great. on acid when I did this. <laughs> that's kind of important. I ran up to this train. I am. Uh, I heard the train coming and I run up to the track and I throw my arms out. And this thing is going like 70 miles an hour and it buzzes past me. I am only a foot away from it. If anything had been sticking out of this thing, I'd have been dead. And the, the, the energy from such a heavy thing moving so quickly, I don't even know if my feet were touching the ground. Uh, it was amazing. It was one of the most amazing things I have 
ever experienced. And I would beg people never to try that. <laughs> Please don't. Um, I shouldn't have, and I wouldn't do it again. But that is an experience I had that not a lot of people share or can understand. So I'm at this point in my life where I realize that uh, I have friends who have experienced things. Uh, I have a, in fact, I, I talked to a friend of mine who has uh, an abduction story. And he is a very reasonable man. Uh, he is smart. He is very successful. He's a great musician. Um, and there is absolutely no reason I shouldn't believe him other than it hasn't been my experience. So I don't understand it. Well, that's sometimes with some of the stuff, too. It's like it's so it sounds so crazy that your brain all mad like, like, yeah, it's bullshit. Right. And it's like we were just literally we were just talking about this, like probably like 45 minutes ago, maybe if that right. like we were having this exact conversation about how like that's why it's important to not be completely closed off to other people's stories because just because it's their experience, like mm -hmm. that's their truth, like doesn't mean that you should close your mind and be like, right. well, I don't have that experience. So therefore it's not true. And it's well, even, fabricated. Yeah, even me, I've told people stuff and they're like, looked at me like I'm crazy. And I'm like, yeah. So, <laughs> so I understand oh, yeah. like where people are coming from where, you know, it's like, some of this, some of this crazy stuff that happened to me, it took me a long time for me to share it with people because it sounded because I sounded so insane. So like, oh yeah, uh, like getting abducted by aliens. I don't know if I'd be comfortable yeah, I don't telling think, anybody. I that. don't think I would feel comfortable. I wouldn't. I'd maybe tell you. Well, yeah, I think I think at this <laughs> point I probably it. would be a little more comfortable talking about it. But I think like if it would have happened to me ten years ago, there's no way I would. I definitely that with wouldn't. I might tell. Okay, I might tell. But I definitely like I understand the aspect that you were saying earlier about like you know people not being public because they there's consequences. I think that's where I would stand. Like, I wouldn't want to be public about it because I'd be like, oh man, like people are going to think I'm crazy. I'm going to lose my job. You know, all this other stuff's going to happen. Well, we've talked to people who, um, their significant others didn't even believe that like their house was haunted, even though they literally saw like something there. They're like, nope, that didn't happen because it was just like, oh, that's weird. So I had my brain, my mom, right, you off can't rationalize it. Yeah, exactly. It was like, oh, there's no, there's no feasible explanation of why that would have happened and it's just there's like, a there's a very happy medium that it's difficult for people to achieve uh you should be open to other people's experiences but you should also understand the uh shortcomings of the the human primate in the mind of the human primate uh and 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 have a critical eye too yeah. critical though and you start uh, you start injecting your opinion into things, not critical enough, and you start believing anything. So there's this fine line that I honestly, I don't know, even understanding this and even working to find that line, it's hard to find. Well, it's uh, like we've the, um, learned recently that people invent their truths. True. That uh, is very true. Yep. This has been a. If we haven't learned that lesson over the past few years, we haven't been I paying attention. I hope we did. Yeah, we <laughs> definitely. Um, that's a big takeaway from that. Without getting any more into it, that's my big takeaway from so that as well. So the question is, where do we find that line? How open should we be, and how critical should we be? You know, I think it's important too. We were talking to me and John. We we're talking about this uh, a little bit ago too. Is um, it's important to open yourself up to those experiences, even if you're pretty sure that the outcome is going to be hey i don't believe it because that teaches you to know what you're looking for in the future situation like you know if i'm am i seeing these red flags am i not seeing these red flags right. and the more you the more you open basically you learn from it like hey like so we can yeah from like um really good example of uh what i was going to talk about was uh like what this is something where you might experience by yourself and then it's kind of hard, but if you have a some a group of people who all experience the exact same thing, that's when it becomes even more insane because you have all you have all these witnesses all to this incredible event. I will give you a, the perfect example of this, and it's been driving me crazy my entire life. When I don't know if you guys had the uh, book fairs. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The book oh fairs my the God! Best. I collected so many monster and wrestler erasers of those things. <laughs> That's but they all you also need had, when you're a kid. Absolutely. They. Uh, but in the '70s, they had a lot of uh, books on the paranormal. They had they had books on on UFOs uh, because it was a it was a hip thing at the time. So I would collect those things and. Um, 
I, I, I would study up. I believed, I definitely believed in ghosts as a kid because I saw stuff. Same. The problem is I eventually, as I got older, realized the reason I was seeing stuff is because for whatever reason, I hallucinated naturally. Uh, I did this until about 23. And when I started doing acid, I was like, oh, that's what this that's is. What this is. <laughs> Thing, acid had all my answers. Who knew? It, you know, and I, I hate to be the, that guy, but by George, that helped me out. <laughs> <laughs> I Thanks, mean, case acid. by case basis, but acid really helped me out on a number of levels. Uh, but understanding what a hallucination was was very helpful for me. Uh, it, it brought down a lot of terror in my life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, so I understand that there's a there's some middle ground there. I don't want to not be open uh, to listening to someone's story. I don't have to believe it. Right. My opinion is not the end all be all. And that's a good thing. It's I think it's exhausting to have to be right all the time. That's and true. Uh, and that's something I just don't need. So I want to this project. It it does a number of things. One, it allows me to celebrate the kind of television that I was really into as a kid, um, especially the very 70s style. Well, of, real quick of um, shows. Hmm? Just real quick, just give a real quick synopsis of what Painting the Unexplained is. Oh, so a uh, quick synopsis. So I like painting this stuff. Uh, I like to paint belief. Um, it interests me what people choose to believe and have chosen to believe through history. And I like painting that. So this was a way to, uh, as I was mentioning, it was a way for me to, to honor the shows that I grew up watching like this that covered this this kind of material it was a way for me to explain what i'm painting because oftentimes people have no idea uh, i remember i had a uh jesus a six foot long two foot tall painting of the battle of stamford bridge and there's a whole story behind it the myth the reality and it's a lot to explain to people and I find that generally you don't sell paintings if you if people can't don't understand them right. and they want to look like they know what they're talking about. So when they buy it, they want to say, well, you know, his uh, he he lost a girlfriend somewhere in Soho and uh, a bird shit on him. And that's what this <laughs> painting is about. It's something simple, something that they can repeat and move on. They don't want to have to explain an essay. And uh, I've only had one person or two people, actually, who just automatically knew what that painting was. And it was wonderful for me. But it also it made me realize that uh, a lot of pe most people aren't interested in this stuff. Uh, not so much that they're going to look into it themselves. If you offer it to them as an anecdote or, or a folk story, you know, a folk tale, then they're interested and then they can they can go back to whatever else they do. That's um, true. You're, you don't have a lot of people that like to research this stuff. So this show is my way of saying that that's this is what this painting is about, and this is why I painted it. And it also occurred to me that I don't really know what my friends believe. That when we get together, we talk a lot, but we never seem to talk about this stuff. So this is um, one of my favorite things about the since I started doing this show, and I've always, you know, I me, mean, I've always been in this stuff too. But mm -hmm. like now, it's like I, everyone's like opening up to me, like ah, this happened right? to me, and I yeah. or this or like that. And like one of my favorite, that's one of my favorite aspects about this now is like everyone's just telling me all the weirdest shit that's happened to them, and I'm like, this is great. Like I just love hearing about this stuff. I love campfire stories. I love telling ghost stories. You know, so absolutely for me, yeah. like to sit down for you know an hour and a half and just talk about weird shit like this is like right up my alley so yeah um oh, yeah. <laughs> have you ever ralph have you ever had like something like cryptid wise where you're like oh maybe i don't believe this but then you start to investigate it a little bit more and maybe you're not necessarily convinced but you're like okay i can see how this maybe this has changed my view and perception of it how it could be believable or this could be someone's truth um i i think that most of the cases that i've investigated uh People have the propensity to uh, to be alarmist and to exaggerate. That's true. Uh, 
if you look at the Flatwoods Monster story, well, that... I'll stop right there. Um, I wanted to get into that because that's your first episode. It's the Flatwoods Monster, mm-hmm. um, which, by the way, I, I watched and I loved it. Same, it's, it's, it's very good. It's, it's really funny. It's about the whole Thank thing, you. especially the thing with Rod Stewart. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, and the, I I didn't know what flat, that's a perfect example yeah. though. But I didn't know what the it flat is. was. It's, months. Oh, I didn't know what the a, flat. Oh, sorry. It's the Go power ahead. of the press. Yeah. You know, um, if uh, if Tony Toon hadn't hadn't had press contacts and told the press that he would have told some friends, and a couple of friends might have repeated that, and that'd have been about it. It was the same thing with Flatwoods. Uh, it was slow news day, and I, I was actually able to track the different papers and at what time they picked this story up and how fast it grew. Explain and, the um, explain the Flatwoods real fast. Explain like the so yeah, just so everybody <laughs> knows what it is. Okay. So um, some time ago, a, a bunch of kids were playing in a playground, a school playground after class, and they saw a meteor. Uh, they didn't know it was a meteor, and they're, they're kids, and this is the age of the UFO, and they read comics, and they watch movies. So they immediately decided, and that's the important part of the story, they decided it was a UFO. Before they ever went to look for it, they made that decision. So then they run home, and they tell their mom, and they picked up a couple of kids on the way and their mom called Gene Lemon because Gene Lemon was a National Guardsman and she figured that if they needed to be protected, he could do it. So they, they head toward this farm where they think they saw it crash and uh, they, they basically trespass in this guy's land and go into the woods on the other side and then they come across this thing and the the woman miss may she literally saw this for two seconds and it within that two seconds gene lemon their uh their security detail had already screamed run off <laughs> well he failed and, he had one and, job and one failed. job yep, one man. job and he <laughs> threw that flashlight and took off and so she she within two seconds they gene far less not even maybe not even a second they decided what this was they were talking about it on the way back and they decided it was this thing it was metallic in places whether it was a a a mechanical thing or it was something living that was inside of of some mechanical shell they hadn't really decided, although May later decided, much later, that she decided it was a spaceship, that it was definitely a spaceship. But definitely. they described this being anywhere from 7 feet tall to 14 feet tall. Um, ufologist Ivan Sanderson, uh, and, and Sanderson was also very instrumental in the interest in cryptids, too. Um, Sanderson went to Flatwoods and he started quote unquote investigating and by investigating, he just started collecting stories. He was already sold that this was real and he was talking to anybody. But the problem was this had become such a big thing and the, the Miss May and her kids and Jean Lemon had already been on national TV about this. So everybody wanted a piece. So we know that only seven people went out there to investigate and originally told the story. But when Sanderson got to it, there it was 14 people. And there were descriptions of a spacecraft that never appeared in the story. And it just went on like that because everybody wanted to be a part of it. They wanted that attention right. and potential money. Well, yeah, it's like, for, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, I was there for that. Oh, this is what happened. Look and at like, me. I was there. Absolutely. Oh, don't talk to him. Talk to me. I was there. He wasn't there. And I know like... everything. <laughs> um, to me, honestly, too, it like the the Flatwoods monster. It looks like, um, it looks like a red robot wearing a dress. That's what it like <laughs> it a dress. Does. It, it, it does. It looks like a big red robot wearing a dress. And then I asked because I was like googling it. I also found this picture where like somebody like had drawn this like cartoon image of that standing next to the Mothman, and then my immediate thought was like, "Oh, cute! It's like Mothman's little wife." Yeah, 
<laughs> See, that's, they're a couple. Cryptids couple. Well, and this story is so easy to debunkable because everybody has something completely different to tell about what happened. And yeah, I like, feel like this is definitely one that's very like, I'm like, is, okay, this is, a this pretty, is what and I'm you, you mentioned that in your episode too. Like, this is this one's really easy to say that this probably didn't happen because it's like... Oh, well, I mean, on top of, uh, of it being such a questionable story, many, many people went out to investigate. Uh, it was... It was it was a big deal. So you had, uh, you had the air force, they came out and looked into it. You had different, uh, different agencies come out. Uh, even as late as a decade or two ago, you still had people coming out to Flatwoods and investigating this story. So it is really the most widely debunked story, but that didn't stop it from being a huge deal and, and growing to such a size that uh that people around the nation have heard of it yeah so it's funny because i've never even heard of this one you Same. mentioned it to me and th- i've like thought this one was, was so under the radar i was like i've never even heard yeah. of the flatwoods monster but now after i did yeah. some more research on it it's like wow like, this is actually a really common right cryptid. and like it's, oh, it's yeah. to me it's like it's, and it's not to say like every cryptid out there is like debunkable and okay yeah that doesn't exist but i definitely think this one was very much to me like after watching um your episode and then researching some stuff on my own i was like okay yeah this is i'm I'm not at all in any way shape or form convinced that this um alien dress thing exists (laughs) (laughs) right and and i'm and i'm open to there isn't a cryptid that i can tell you i i believe exists because i feel that that requires um, some per- personal interaction that I've never right. had, but I, I have, there, there is, I have one, there's one thing I've seen that wasn't a cryptid. Well, I don't know if you, it might be, it might be considered a cryptid because it wasn't a normal size, but, uh, I was dating this person some time ago when I was in college and her, uh, her grandfather was a, a mob lawyer. So he made decent cash and he had this really nice uh, vacation home off Lake Catherine in Louisiana and Lake Catherine, it, it's very remote. You had to drive 45 minutes to get to the closest convenience store. Wow. So uh, we got tired. My girlfriend and I got tired of her family and decided that we needed milk. So we were going to drive out to get milk and we're in the middle of this 45 minute drive and uh, she drives a embarrassingly a geo metro i used to call it a burp on wheels <laughs> and oh, I uh, you i don't know if you've seen one of these but it's oh, a, I remember it's a relative oh yeah yeah heard... relatively small car it's, it's a death not trap a, <laughs> right it's not an mg or anything but it is a small car so we're driving along and the only light is the headlights and we're talking to each other and only paying attention to the road a little because there's nobody out there. It's our road. We look up and she slams on the brakes. There is the biggest boar I've ever seen. It was almost the size of the car. And it's eating something in the middle of the road. It looks up at us, grunts, and goes back to eating. Hey, guys, what's up? I have never seen an animal that big in, well, without the the benefit of uh, a fence. Yeah. separating us it was huge and we we looked at it for a while and then just gunned the fucking car <laughs> and drove around it but uh but that was amazing and and i knew that louisiana had wild pigs but i'd never seen any and certainly i've never seen anything that big not in a zoo have i seen a wild pig that large it was like something out of a horror movie now uh I was I was with the ex girlfriend. Um, I might add, if it's uh, if it's not impolite, that she's insane. <laughs> so, really, no, there's no reason for anybody to believe that story. She is certainly not. You wouldn't want to say, "Well, talk to her; she'll set you straight." Because uh, you'll just if if she'll do anything, she'll she'll double down, and you'll think, "Yes, it was definitely made up." Um, or they're all crazy, but, uh, I did see this thing and living in Louisiana, you see some weird animals. Um, they're all big, they're all angry. And, uh, 
the you don't uh, you can't identify all of them necessarily. That's true. I think you know that's a really good example of um, why I think it's kind of important to be um, to come at cryptid stories with the mentality of knowing that we don't know everything. I feel like the ocean's a very good example uh, of this. Like the ocean, mm-hmm. um, I guess it's estimated that like. 91 of ocean 91 percent of ocean species have yet to be classi- classified and then on top of that there is more than 80 percent of the ocean are oceans that are considered unmapped um, or unobserved or unexplored so oh, i mean yeah. that's an example of like there there's scientifically proven out there already there's stuff that we don't know well about. that's why like a lot of stories like what you were to say like Louisiana, especially you know the swamps. You and I have talked about how just creepy the swamps are down there, and oh, this yeah. is like you know nothing but wildlife. And then like you uh, go to like you know parts of Canada where like Sasquatch has been sighted. It's in the middle of nowhere. Which yeah, that's like, one of those cryptids that like I think is is very likely. And you know a perfect example, of Ralph. You're saying you know like you know you don't necessarily believe it because you haven't had that experience. I have a same mentality. Like I don't believe it, but I don't like if it's. If it's definitely something that I'm like, okay, that that could be possible, that like, I'm not gonna mm-hmm. say it's not true right. either. And that's how I feel about the whole like Bigfoot and Yeti thing is right. like it's not out of the realm of possibilities. So I'm not gonna say it doesn't exist, but well, I haven't seen it. Especially like you right. know, like, in places like Wyoming where, you know, there's more land than anything else and there's barely any people out there, like Of course. Yeah, all kinds like, of weird stuff has been seen out there as well. Mm-hmm. Because there's this, you know, Lots of space and lots of animals, so if something big can thrive on, <laughs> then there we go. I mean, and there's there's a lot of areas too, like in the wild, like that, where there's just like miles and miles and miles of just forest that's uninhabited, that like by us, like we don't well, go there, people don't live there, so it's like we don't know what's going on there, right? Right. And if there's a species that's endangered, and you know wants to stay the fuck away from us that's probably where they're gonna be and if they wanted to stay the fuck away with from us i don't really think i would blame them <laughs> to me there there are two ends of the spectrum there if uh if you look up there are cryptids that are the most asinine things you've ever heard yeah that uh were uh were talked about by lumberjacks and apparently, there are a lot of lumberjack-related cryptid stuff, but they're all—they're insane. They're, it's really unlikely, really right. unlikely. Right. And then on the other hand, you have slime molds. <laughs> do you know what a slime mold is? I do not. I've never heard of this. A slime mold—it's—it's it's beautiful. It's a—they uh, can look like plants. And during the day, they will. They'll look like these weird, rubbery little plants. And then at night, they break down and completely change form. And they look like a, a patch of fungus on a tree, but they move. Oh, weird. Recently, they, it, it, they've discovered that they have, a, they have a, a, a method of remembering things. It's weird. It's like it's, they're, they're covered in these, they, these little tubes. And something about the tubes is how they remember things. And if, if they go somewhere and there's uh, there is an ample food source, they will remember where that food source Dude, is. Dude, these things look like something from a yeah. straight up like a sci-fi I'm looking at horror them movie. too. It's like yes, they look doesn't even look real. Yeah, it looks they're like... creepy. It's like if somebody took the whole theory of like the blob and basically turned <laughs> yes. it into a giant piece of like yellow fungus looking thing. <laughs> well, it's like a cross between the blob and the and the uh, the liquid Terminator. I was gonna say okay, the yeah. stuff that like the aliens yeah. secrete in alien. Yeah, it does remind me. I was gonna say it's very like the stuff alien they put looking. On the, on the walls. Like if you it didn't tell me about this and how it works, I could see somebody mm. looking at it and being like, "That's alien. I don't understand it. Therefore, it's alien, and that's extraterrestrial." Right. Really. Now that crawling little slime can form something that looks like and behaves like a plant. That's yeah. incredible to me. Uh, yeah. And and look at octopuses. Yeah, we, we really <laughs> we we're really bad about downgrading the potential for intelligence in other creatures because Absolutely. because of our ego. Um, elephants elephants have burial rites. They have a complex language that they speak that is uh, like it's a a sub bass rumble that they hear with their feet. 
They're very complicated uh, uh, emotional creatures. They're very intelligent. And what do we do with those? We we game hunt them. Right. You know, and or- the orcas because it's are not a our very intelligence. similar thing. Orcas are a very similar thing to elephants. Yes. They're yeah. very, you know, as far as the intelligent mm-hmm. levels in the same way. Like, how do we treat them? You know, they're hunted down. The octopus has better problem solving facilities than humans. Yes, octopus. Yeah. You know, and an octopus. Speaking of um, cryptids, is also a very like interesting one to me because there's a lot of you know octopus related um, cryptids out there, and that's to me like one of those examples where I'm like, well, if there's that large percentage of the ocean that we just don't know jack shit about that it's not completely impossible that there might be some kind of giant octopus down there that we just don't know about. Right. Like I uh, think one of them, a good example of that is the Kraken. Kraken's a good uh, yeah. cryptid. That oh, I'm yeah. Just like, the, the this giant could be, squid. Yeah, squid, yeah. This could be just something that was misinterpreted that's really just a giant squid. Well, no, they found they found tentacles that are like 60 feet long. Right, like, right. Off the they, land. They, yeah, like, yeah <laughs> they found those. So like clearly like <laughs> this is an actual <laughs> species that like was just obviously when the, you know, stories were first started was probably just misunderstood because they didn't have the scientific knowledge that we have now where we're like, okay, it's obviously a giant. Well, there's squid or something of that nature. Hundreds of sea mariners like cryptid, like uh, underwater sea creature stories that are just you know amazing. Those are my tales. favorite yeah, type I of love, cryptids I love personally. Those. Like I love the kraken. <laughs> I love the Loch Ness monster. I love all those things. The underwater ones are by far my favorite. So on your uh, new episode, the one you just released, your second episode for your show, you did the uh, the Frogman. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um. So the, explain a little bit about him. I had done a painting uh, forever ago. There was a show in Cleveland at the at I don't know if you know who James Bullock is. No, he's uh, he's in the metal band Ringworm. Oh yeah 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 okay. And he owns a a gallery in uh, Cleveland, and he had a show called Evil Ohio, and it was about all the uh, Ohio serial killers or cryptids. Or any weird stuff that happened in Ohio, any weird legends, and uh, it was a fun show. And I did the Green Claw Monster of the Ohio River, the Green Claw Beast, for that. And uh, so I figured that I could use that for the series. But I, I try to paint something for every series, so I still wanted to paint something. I did really like the, that painting though, a lot. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. But uh, <clears throat> the the Loveland Frog Monster. It's it's not something that's been seen a lot, so it, it's it's potentially unlikely, especially since, as you as you heard in the episode, a couple of the sightings turned out to be nothing. Um, but it's it, what fascinates me is the original story, and it makes me want to know more about this nameless salesman that originally saw these three four foot tall frogs standing on their hind legs one of them wielding a magic out. wand <laughs> what up i mean that's interesting right um, yeah i mean i will say like i just like i didn't i googled this but let me clarify i just google imaged it and like it's the most entertaining thing ever like i can't help but giggle a little bit um and i will say um, i'm not gonna get into any explanation of this but like if my sister if you're listening to this episode we're talking about frogs and that's just an inside joke that you guys don't need to know about. So anyway, okay. continue on to the frogs. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh it's 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 highly unlikely, but that to me that doesn't diminish the story at all. Uh the story is what fascinates me. Um whether it's true or not, the Flatwoods monster is my my favorite cryptid and it's the least it's the one least likely to exist. Um, but, the, but the story is so entertaining. The story is, is it's great. Very, it's the very... design of the creature is fantastic. Yeah, okay. yeah, it definitely. It looks like something that was looks somebody like looks designed like a... for like an old movie. Oh, or, for for the original Doctor Who series. Yeah, yes, that's what yes, it looks yep. like to me as an old I, Doctor yep, Who villain. Exactly. That's kind of what I mean. Like that ju- that genre that that time period of like what horror was then um, oh yeah that's exactly what i thought actually when i saw that i was like that looks like it was made for a movie set so really i mean you're looking at this this spectrum where the, you, a lot of these stories uh people love attention and people will lie to get it people are also uh they're 
their uh, their sight, their hearing, uh, it's faulty. Yeah. The mo- a lot of shadow people stuff uh, is, and I can't remember the term for it, but in your peripheral vision, you can't see so well. So what your brain does is it analyzes the images you're seeing out of the corners of your eyes, and it's saying, well, it look mo- it looks most like this, and it literally inserts that image into the experience to try to fill it in. So you get a lot of shadow people phenomenon through that experience, just you, your brain trying to just functioning the way the brain's designed to function. Which did you hear sense. about um critters? This is on our one of our last episodes. Did you hear about her shadow person experience? No. She woke she woke up from her dog barking and she woke up and there was a full fledged shadow person standing above her bed. Good lord. And the dog was barking at it. See, and I feel like, you know, <laughs> I, I you know, I completely agree with um Ralph's explanation as yes. far as how the brain works. Um which I feel mm. like this day and age, like people wearing masks, you know, for yeah. you know, our current situation, um, mm. is a perfect example of that because I've noticed that like um there's people I'll meet for the first time and they'll have a mask on and your brain will just fill in what they're supposed to look like. And, and then, then they take it off you see like, them without whoa, the mask you and you're like that's not what you look like. But I mean, right. that's a perfect example. But then again, that's not to say that every single you know, shadow person story isn't it's legitimate. It's a spectrum. Nothing right. is black and white. Well, that- You're going to have, uh, for any of these cryptids, for any, for a, especially uh, alien visitation phenomenon or shadow people or, or certain uh, certain examples of this kind of stuff, it's, it's not black and white. It's a spectrum. Right. It's, there are going to be people that they just, saw something sideways and freaked out about it. But then there are experiences you cannot explain. One of my favorite examples of that is uh, Betty and, and Barney Hill, yeah, who were the first one. people to to claim to be, a, a publicly claim to be abducted by aliens, and they were the first people to describe greys. Now, I'm open to believing that they did not see an alien or a spaceship, right? But they saw something. They had PTSD after that trip. They clearly saw something, something they didn't understand. Um, so that's the most compelling story right there I've ever well, heard. And the other thing too is like for me is like what you can you can some you can tell when someone's bullshitting you, right? You can tell. Like, you can tell when someone's like turned this into a grand story and it's like fabulous. And I'm, I want attention. And- but then there's times right. someone tells a story and they're just like. A good example of this was like Maori was telling her story of our haunted house, and she was going back and she like was stopping. She's like, right. I forgot about all this stuff. And, and she, you could tell you there were like times she was stress, uncomfortable. That stress was coming back from having reliving like reliving this ex- terrible experience that she went through. And that, or it's people like, oh yeah, I lived in this house and blah, blah, all this stuff happened and it was really cool or whatever. It's like, uh, no, it's what? not. I think anybody that's a big way to know, like if someone's bullshitting you or not, yeah. like what they're, they're, how they're perceiving the situation. Like if they're like, yeah, yeah it was so cool. Then that makes me like, want to be like, okay, it's not cool when it happens. No, um, it's-, it's terrifying. So if you're saying it's so cool, that already is going to make me be well, very. Your one is uh, if someone's like trying to one up your story, like oh that's scary, but I have a right, scarier, right, I have a right. scarier story. I'm it's like my scary, my story. It's like if you if you experience this, it doesn't matter what level you experience it. You experience it, it's fucking terrifying. Um, I am going to say, and I, you know, I think one of the most interesting things to me too, and like, you know, us talking about like people's perceptions of things, and you know how many people um, experience a thing. Um, perfect example of this and I'm just going to open this can of worms obviously I don't want to do like we could go on about this forever and ever and ever and probably do a whole entire episode about this or multiple episodes Um, is I think the Mothman is a very good example <laughs> of like you know well I knew he was going to come up on this episode yeah, it's, was, I'm just going to rip we're that bandaid wait. off we're right now for the Mothman um, to show up. but I just think yeah I invited him to the party um, <laughs> <laughs> but I just think that's a perfect example um you know of there being multiple witnesses um and people having their own experiences because you know a lot of them line up but there are like ones that you hear that you stand out where you're like okay that person obviously they want attention or but like i personally think most of them like most of these people like something happened there like yeah, something oh, yeah. went something on definitely and- happened. It, there can simultaneously be a misunderstanding as to what the event was and that would not make the event any any less right. unusual. Right. It um, wouldn't make it any less terrifying either. 
uh, a good example. When I was a kid, um, we didn't have a phone. If we wanted to use a phone. I had my mom would give me a message, and I'd have to walk a mile, mile and a half to to this old dude's house. It was a friend of ours, and I could use his phone. Then I had to walk back home. So on the way back, it was uh, twilight by the time I left, and it was getting darker. And I'm almost to my house, and we had some kittens, and I think I see one of them. And I'm like, how in the world a kitten get out? So I, I get on the ground. And I am two feet away from it, and I'm I'm talking to it and cooing to it, and it's looking at me, and its little eyes are sparkling, and it's it's tilting its head it's back and forth. It's in love with you. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, "Hold on, that's not a cat. Is that a puppy?" So I start talking to it like it's a strange puppy, and I get even closer to it, and it's just it's it's just looking at me, and I it's so dark I can't see, and I get probably six inches from this thing, and I'm on the ground with it. And that's when I realized it's a skunk. <laughs> oh, I knew this was going in some direction no. like that. And I no. wish I had had a head about me, but I didn't. Instead, I screamed, oh, my God, it's a skunk, and scared it. And that's when it wanted to squirt me, and I managed to escape it. Uh, but what I thought was there wasn't there, but something was there. Yeah. Right. To put it simply. So and and we we tend to a good example is anthropomorphizing animals. We tend to look at other things through our own eyes and we want to be able to relate to them. So what if there's a lot of this stuff that we that we talk about when we talk about uh, UFOs or aliens or cryptids or, or the paranormal that we're trying to humanize in some way. And we're just, it's not that it's not happening. It's just that we have a complete lack of understanding as to what it is. Right. I feel like that's a lot of, um, that's an accurate statement as far as some of those situations go. Like, I feel like we're just trying to, to understand something that we don't necessarily have the, um, capability of understanding right now. Right. Um, because... I mean, there could be other things out there that we're right. completely unaware of. I because think because so. when we when we witness these things, we look through the file of facts in our head, and we're like, okay, Bigfoot, or okay, it's an alien, because right. that's a concept we we've already come to terms with. So, so we're we can going accept to that a little bit this more into that box, right? Because that's yeah. better than not understanding it, and that's kind right. of how I feel that I perceive about the Mothman thing a lot. I think it's something that, like, so people are just so busy trying to like categorize, even though I think it's I think it's just generally something that we don't well, comprehend this quite is, yet. This is why, like, um, shadow people scare me so much. Um, I've yeah. had some terrible experiences Jordan with shadow, shadow people. I, fucking I, I'm scared, but, uh, but I've never had an experience, and I think I've, that's I've had too many experiences with shadow people. They they fucking suck. But uh, it's because it's they these like the ultimate unknown because you have no idea what the hell this thing is, and sometimes you're like, oh yeah, this is my brain playing tricks on me. But then, you know, for me, it's like someone else saw the exact same thing I saw, or mm -hmm. my my animals reacted to it. <laughs> That's the worst. Or, or I feel like, like I literally fucking felt the damn thing. Like you know, right. well, weird, crazy shit like that. So, um, to me, it's like the ultimate. That's what it's like. Almost like the Boggart and like Harry Potter. But it's I like think, the ultimate. Like you never do not know what the hell I, this I thing think, is. Yeah, that that goes back so to that. Like your brain just you don't know what it is. So, so you're, you're just like. So that's why to me it's like that's why they scare me so much is because it's like the ultimate of unknown. That's not to no say I wouldn't be scared if I saw one. I would probably just straight up shit my pants. But <laughs> like I'm I'm being honest. It's funny, but I'm being honest. Um, but yeah, I think that you know. And I, you know, I do think we have, as humans, we have the complex of like, we feel this need that we have to understand everything and we have to know and we can't just let it be and yeah. like, well, and leave it alone. I'm glad you brought, I'm glad you brought Mothman up Mothman's because the best. Um, in recent decades, the Russians have started having Mothman sightings. Yes. They had, a, there was a, a, an apartment building bombing. And before the bombing, people saw Mothman. Now, John Keel, who wrote the Mothman prophecies and clearly believes in the Mothman, said that they, they're they just copying us. They don't have a Mothman. That doesn't exist. <laughs> and it's I'm funny sure because with the past few years of things that have gone on here, that's what they want to do is copy us. Sure. Right. But but it I think that's funny because John Keel is suddenly on both ends of that spectrum. Right. He's a diehard believer. You uh, there's nothing you could do to convince him that he's wrong about anything. But if somebody else claims the same thing, oh, they're just making it up. They're that's stealing just, my thunder. That's baloney. 
There's um the New Jersey Devil. Uh, people have speculated that the New Jersey Devil and Mothman are the same thing. Which you know a you, lot of the, you lot of said that to me, and I and could I could see also, that. Also, um, what's weird about the New Jersey Devil is there's all these like legit like news reportings about the New Jersey Devil back in the seventies as well. Right. So I have a thought on this. Um, like as far as cryptids in general. And sometimes I wonder that if like a lot of cryptids that people claim to see um, are, you know, cause you know, you'll see something in one area and then there's a similar story, but they call it something else. You almost wonder if that goes back to like it being some species that we don't know about yet because, you know, bears are a concept. We can't understand. Right. Well, bears are a good example of that. There's bears are all over, but there's different species. So is this like just a different part of that species that we just don't know about? Or as you said, Ralph, something that we don't understand. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Keel also uh, popularized the concept that aliens don't come from space, cryptids don't necessarily live here, that there uh, or or the paranormal doesn't necessarily exist. That what it what he thinks it is is uh, a thin membrane between potential universes, and it's thin enough Dimensions, that we can yeah. see into it. Or sometimes pass into it, or things can come out. I like that theory, though. Like we, could, it's could an be interesting it. theory. We, we, yeah. It is an interesting theory. Well, that's um, what... Another theory that I've, I've come across for that I really enjoy for uh, for the paranormal is block universe theory. Now, block universe theory says that if you look at a square, let's say that the the width is the second dimension and the height is the third dimension. The fourth dimension is depth. So if you turn that block around, there are points on, on that side of the block that, that chronicle your entire life, let's say. That we're, this block universe is your specific universe. Now, there is no such thing as the past or the future. Everything is now. Uh, we, we have an illusion that there is such thing as a past because of memory. Right. And it's just much easier for us to think of it that way. But there is no past. Everything is now. Everything is happening now and changes in the now. But the now has happened. It it happened before you were born. The now happens after you die. There's a lot of now. Um, and if we knew how, we could access that now along what we consider a timeline. So it's possible that when we see uh, paranormal stuff, when we see ghosts, that what we're actually doing is somehow we're we're accessing one of those other nows, and yep. we're seeing it. We're 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 seeing it sort of unfold. We just we're not we're not good enough at tapping into this to make ourselves fully present in another now, right? Or even know that that's recognized that that's what's happening. Yeah, I've heard that before. And I, I do think that that is very, very interesting. Um, and uh, I think that's also a good example. Right, of, it could be It's kind of thinking it. outside the box. We think of yeah. ghosts and, and even uh, even people of other religions, even atheists. If uh, And I've, I've found out there are a lot of atheists that believe in ghosts. That the ghosts they believe in are very much from Christian mythology. Yep. That there's a way there's a way to think about it. And that's the way that we have been trained to think about it. But what if right. it doesn't happen that way? Well, what if it's a, yeah, what if think, the concept is far removed from that? I think that's a lot of our problem, though, too, when it comes to stuff like that in general, is we've just, you know, over years as a society, we've just been trained to see things a certain way. So that's just what we do. I, yeah, it's just it's easier for us to accept the unknown if we can force it into a box we understand. Because yeah. we do that with everything. Yep. I mean, we do yes. that with everything. Um, I think, um, you know, another kind of interesting thing that is related is um, to, you know, us not understanding things um, is, I don't know, have you guys heard the theory that, um, and this isn't just like, oh, some like BS theory that there are scientists that actually believe this, but that um, octopuses are aliens. Yeah, I've heard that theory. I have heard that. Yeah, yes, heard and this is like legit that they're like the DNA from an octopus is extraterrestrial and like it, it traveled to Earth on like a meteor or something. And it's like, okay, I mean, that's a perfect example of how like 
tiny our little minds are that for the longest time, we're just like, you know, this is a normal thing. But then there's this explanation that kind of proves, you know, what we're saying. Like, there could be something that we just don't understand right now. I think there's a lot of things we don't understand. <laughs> and that's In not general, to say that I, I, I believe th- octopuses are aliens or not. Like, the theory's yeah. not proven, but that's just kind of an example. No, I, I, think just, right. I think in general, the humans, like, have less <laughs> it's just like i think there's a lot of things we don't understand yeah and we, just we try think to... we do and we well, don't we have such a need to understand That's we too. we get upset we and even angry when we feel we don't understand things so the way to avoid that is to make it up to right. fill in we those say cracks we do. Yeah. and then and then double down and say well this is definitely it but the problem with that is it's not true understanding it's not true knowledge and it's closing you off to other potential uh, uh, possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, you know, again, not to, you know, go back to the Mothman, but I'm going back, back to the Mothman. I think that was a big thing that happened there was people we always were so go back quick. To the well, we I, will. Oh, yes. I think the Mothman um, is Mothman like. Mothman is all. Um, <laughs> well, Mothman is like the flagship carrier right. for of cryptids. Exactly. I mean, it's like he's like the ultimate cryptid. He is. So I'm probably going to, we're probably going to about this a lot, but. You know, I, that is what happened there, I feel like, is a lot of people were very quick to they want to understand it. And I think so many people put that like, oh, it's extraterrestrial, it's alien. But I don't think I don't think it is. But um, there's a lot of people that that's what they wanted to believe because they mm-hmm. didn't know what it was and they couldn't explain it. So, like, that's what they decided. And that's what a uh, lot of people tend to believe. It's an alien. I don't know if, if you either of you are old enough to have heard this, but... Uh, Back when Bigfoot was, well, Bigfoot is still a big thing. It never really died out. But in the 70s, a story came out that it, that what people thought was Bigfoot was actually a, uh, a Japanese pilot from World War II that had crashed, it gotten amazingly lost (laughs) and uh, crashed his plane in the woods and just started living there like a hermit and was just unbelievably hairy. And that they found him and finally took him out of the woods. But you know what? That never happened either. But it was a story that a a certain segment of the population could digest as the explanation for that. Which I feel like, you know, that's a lot of times i was gonna say that story just sounds just as unbelievable as big (laughs) right right. like that's like i've who would be like who would do that be like oh well i'm lost so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna stay here that that i find out i have i have a hard time believing that that there's some just giant creature lives in the woods that we don't see because it's like super right. it's like i can believe that easier like than like, like, <laughs> like i just don't see anybody being so lost in the woods that they were just like well, well i'm just gonna wasn't, stay here he didn't stay there because he was so lost yeah. in the woods he stayed there because he didn't know the war had ended well that's not you and know what? he was the enemy okay, in that's, u.s that territory seems, that, that so more that, believable that actually but. happened though there was a group of uh, japanese war fighters who got lost in the woods and for 26 years they were still snipering a town uh-huh. Um, and now, they, they didn't believe because it was I think it was in China and they didn't believe that the war was over <laughs> so having heard that story nice. this explanation is even more believable right so they were taking that story that actually did happen um, I mean you go on YouTube there's tons of videos about these there's four guys and they slowly start dying off and eventually there's one guy who was living out there for like 26 years or something like that and they uh-huh. finally caught him and then he had no idea like what was going on because he, 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 they were told to fight to the death and that yeah. never, they never believed that the, the Japanese government would ever surrender. Right. Um, they even got like Surprise pamphlets again. dropped in the woods and they thought it was fake par- uh, like Like propaganda. somebody was trying yeah, to like, like, was fake lure propaganda. them yeah. in. <laughs> so like, well, like, and the thing is, <laughs> we used propaganda like that. We did. Though. I mean, we the did. U.S. has. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so yeah, it, that like... makes it even more believable, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because we did, and we have, and we would probably still do that. That's just, that's one of those like really fascinating like pockets of World War II stories that kind of gets lost in the shuffle of everything else. But but I still don't think that Bigfoot is a Japanese. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I no no I don't think that. But um, I mean that kind of is I don't know. But on the other end of the spectrum, there are situations where like something is explained and you're like okay like something's over embellished when it's really just like um when it's really just it's it's something that 
wasn't understood at the time. I think a perfect example of that is um, if you guys have ever seen the show River Monsters with Jeremy Wade. And like, there's a lot of stuff that he dives into, especially like Amazon River type things where it's like, there's this big folklore legend and then he's like, it's really a barracuda. It's a massive <laughs> barracuda that had plenty of space and plenty of food to thrive. Right. Become like the biggest predator in, in the in the river or whatever. Which, you know, I think, again, you know, you need to have an open mind to both ends of the spectrum. Because yeah. and, and you, you're going to you be can't... in that position where you convince yourself it's something. Yeah. Right. And that's a TV show. So, honestly, you have to take that with a grain of salt. Exactly. True, um, true. Yeah. That's what also true. What was the Bear Grillis? Uh, I watched that jackass in an episode of his show and he is going to catch a catfish and he reaches in the water and he's struggling and struggling. Oh my God. Uh, uh, and he's really playing it up <laughs> and he pulls this catfish out of the water and it's not moving. That fucking catfish is dead. He just wrestled <laughs> he a dead catfish for the sake of uh, the TV show. Which, yeah. you know, that's a good example of like being careful what you see on the TV because it's yeah. over embellished oh, yeah. People... because they, it, that catches our brain. Um, right. So, you know, you should definitely do your, you always should, you know, if you're watching something about something, you should always also do your own investigation. Like you shouldn't let internet or tv tell you what you're supposed to be thinking but we exactly as humans yeah. tend to do that sometimes you know that reminds me of another cryptid story and i cannot i apologize i can't remember all the details of it um but um it was uh, i want to say maybe it was in arizona i'm not 100 percent sure but there was this woman um and she lived on a ranch i think it was and she had chickens that she mm-hmm. kept out in cages and they were like um, they kept getting attacked, uh, but and getting killed. But when they were getting attacked, whoever was attacking them it wasn't eating them; it was just sucking out their blood. And then I forget exactly what she did, what the steps were, but she went and set up like some kind of like scenario or a trap where she could get them caught. And I think she had like footage and I stuff. And the then story. there was like she eventually um, she ended up wound it up getting like a dead one. And it didn't look like she's like, I, you know, I've ranched my entire life. Like, I know my coyotes and thing like that. And I know what a normal dog looks like. Are you talking about Chupacabra? No, I don't think I don't think it was Chupacabra. Because that uh, that sounds like Chupacabra. That's what too. it sounds like. But... but the thing was, she I oh, whatever it was, um, I remember she s- said that, you know, because she had the body um, and she sent it to um, she sent it off to be tested. And they came back and told her that they couldn't match the dna with any known breed of dog hmm. so i mean that's also like we don't fucking know everything so right you know well, it's it's that I'm could be something again that that's too. yeah yes. same and i'm okay <laughs> with that well, like, always i don't something. i don't understand the <clears throat> needing to have an answer so bad that you'll make one up uh everything about the universe is a mystery uh so much around us is mystery i enjoy the mystery i enjoy the the idea that in the general scheme of things i'm actually really small in comparison and that there are much right. bigger things happening out there and they're fan they're fascinating this this is great. I think that's inspirational. Yeah, uh, and it, it might doesn't... have been the chupacabra. I don't remember, like I said for sure, but like it was something that along the lines and the end result was like they were like, yeah, we don't know what this is. And that's great. That's exciting to me. It's exciting to find something out. It's exciting to to find another mystery. I mean, think about it. Most of the things that we know. Every time we learn something, it just opens up a whole new can of, of questions, you know? Right. right. Um, and so we, by by researching and by learning, we create we, so many more mysteries. They grow exponentially from that. Right. I think we have this mentality, too, that, like, the Earth is ours. It belongs to us. And we right. get to know everything about it. And we need to know everything about it and everything that's going on. And that's not true statement it does not you know it's not ours right we live here but it does not belong to us and we don't have to know everything (laughs) and i think that's saying that something that yeah um, we are not more people yeah we more people need to accept that like we don't need to know everything um there's stuff that goes on here there's stuff other stuff that lives here um and we don't need to know about it we can easily just leave some of this stuff alone 
I mean, I say we easily can, but that's not really. <laughs> we can't but that's because not people true. suck. But people suck. I, I, everything has to be categorized and everything has to have an explanation. And right. This is this. And this is. It's funny, too, that you say that because even like if you go like funny and like everything has to have a category category to be in. Um, it's funny because even if you go on like Wikipedia and like look up cryptids they even try to categorize the cryptids. <laughs> different cryptids yeah. yes That's funny. yes they categorize them there's like in three categories they're like aquatic or semi-aquatic and there's terrestrial and winged like they've even gone to all the trouble like somebody's like has sat down and gone to the trouble and decide you know what i need to put these guys in some categories. <laughs> well, well it also makes are, it a little bit easier to that's, find. That's uh, cryptozoologists. Yeah. Like, then that's, that's probably... It makes it easier to figure out, like, right. to... Because to, uh, that way, too, it's like, okay, well, this story was... This one was in water. Okay, that eliminates mm. these... This collection right here of what this could have been. Or, you know, maybe it's a brand new one or whatever. That's true. Well, I feel I like that would make that easy. I don't know if you've known any, like, giant Star Wars nerd who has just shit tons of the toys oh yeah. yeah they've they've got them sorted oh yeah they know and they know, you know? every they know every right. um character they know every and if you ask well this looks like this guy why are they not together they're not the same this one was the mattel 1972 <laughs> release and blah right. blah blah right and so they have... uh if you enjoy something that much if you're that into it if that's all you think about and you run out of things to think about that subject about category categorization comes in you know right. that's right. where you're like that's true. well this will help me it won't but it, it, it won't. gives you something you to do in the does. meantime right you think it because does you help love you it. you think it it's helps like you alphabetizing so it's okay. your cds right <laughs> but it's like those two those star wars people like they have like a billion quadrillion figures and they're all on shelves and and if you've seen those people that have so much stuff that's like back they have like storage rooms that they display uh-huh. it in um it's like those people have so much stuff on their shelves and aisles and aisles of it but if you moved if you switched around two figures they would notice. They would <laughs> right. notice. Like you moved that. And categorization is uh, it, it's a it's a step toward trying to understand. That's true. Right. That is a good thing too. Like so, I guess it is good that you know this is here well, on I- Wikipedia that someone has done this because um, there's even two like you go through the list and like each one has a link that. You can click and you can, you know, you can open yeah. it. You can learn more about some of them I've never heard of. Well, there, um, there some thing, of them I have. There are things too about like categorization. Maybe you yourself might have experienced something and you're like, what the fuck right. was and that? Then you'll and you'll be like, like this okay, is where well, I can this look. is. You know, kind of well, like your dog man story. That's how, that's how you kind of, yeah, <laughs> right, uh, right. You know, it's yeah. like okay, this is what I saw. Let me look for a similar description. So here's the weird thing about that. Well, first off, when it, when it happened, if you want to hear the story, you can go back and listen to episode five, booze, booze, and uh, boobs, boobs, and booze. I'm not gonna go through the entire story again here. It's a lot it's of boobs. boobs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Crypt like boobs. reason why we're I was actually gonna save the story for this episode, but when Critter told me. Her story, I was like, wait a second, I have something very almost identical to yours. And it was the only time ever I met someone who had the same, who's ever had anything with a dog man. I was like, I've never met anyone. I thought I was this crazy or I'm like, no, I was like, whatever, didn't have to, it could have been anything. But her story was almost identical to what I had. So it was that, that freaked me out. With the other weird thing about dog men, the Rougarou, werewolves and all that shit, the weirdest thing to me is you go on Mothman, yeah, you can find page after page after page after page after page after page or books or whatever on mothman dogman is like almost blacklisted oh yeah yeah it's i that, tried after you told me your story like that I, to me is time. the and that's like was we we're both talking about like neither one of us have seen photos even like talking about you know even fake photos or even like mm-hmm. illustrations of what we saw we have never seen anything because you know normally like even like you're talking like with the um with the Flatwoods monster, you know, there's tons of drawings and animations and everyone has their own idea of what this thing looked like. Dogman, it's like the only thing I can find on werewolves is all this, like all the pop like, culture stuff. Right. That's and I can't it. find anything about like, and that is the weirdest part. And, um, I guess like even people who have, um, I was talking to a couple people about this too. And, um, like even like the government has like scrubbed out stuff with Dogman. It's really weird. It's like, what the hell is like, why is everything else like totally accessible? But why are they 
like scrubbed from like from the internet. You know, that, and that to kind me of is what like, weirds me out probably more so than anything brings else. Brings me to the question <laughs> of something that Jordan and I have discussed is like, you know, cryptids the possibility of being like species that we haven't discovered, but also like, is there, you know, the possibility that maybe if these were like something like government-y that like escaped that or like science experiments that we just weren't weren't, awry. Right, or science <laughs> a science experiment that somebody did like that we and we just weren't supposed to know about it and oopsie it's out there now um which i mean it sounds kind of crazy to some people i'm sure but i mean it's not really out of the realm of possibilities that's that's um, what just weirds me out i think the most about the dogman thing is just the fact that there's like so little information out there right. and it's one of the more you know werewolves are huge right i mean so it, it's really weird it could have <laughs> happened too i mean because you have to remember like the thing i you know remind myself of when it's stuff like that is like yeah science is a great thing and all we've learned a lot from it and it's done a lot for us as a society but there's also people that don't use it in a positive manner and yeah. um, they use it in a negative manner. And that does lead to a lot of experimentation on um, animals and sometimes people. So, you know, some people suck basically. Uh, you should look up chimera research. It's a thing that, that happens. I, I read an article pretty recently about it. Um, and it's the marriage of human DNA with some animal DNA to see if they can grow an animal. Yeah. It um, happens. Yes, I it's, have heard. There are laws against it this. in some countries, uh, but yeah, chimera research is becoming a, a bigger thing. The thing to remember about Dogman, though, is uh, those legends come and go. You, mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember what the name uh, of the of the cryptid is, but in the 1600s, the French had a a series of killings that they blamed on werewolves, and it was a it was a big to do. And yeah. so werewolves as a cryptid comes and goes. The In the 70s, Bigfoot was big. It's still pretty big now. Loch Ness Monster was big. Not so much now. I think Loch Ness Monster is... Um, I think that's the one that's been almost debunked um, to death at this point. Oh, yeah. Um, and, th and that's part of the problem. But now we have Mothman and we have the Flatwoods Monster. We have new ones. The yeah. question is, are they going to stay in the mind's eye? Uh, werewolves have done that for some reason. The concept of wolf men have fascinated us uh, since, like I said, since the 1600s and before. Do you know one of the first horror movies I've ever seen uh, is, uh, and I don't know the date on Edison's Frankenstein because he did a version of Frankenstein, and I, I want to say that was like 1910. Was, was it 1910? So that that may have been the first one, but the, I actually have a werewolf flick that was done in the early 20s. Uh, people are fascinated with wolf men and it comes and goes, but it never seems to. Holy crap, completely. I was right. 1910. Wow. I am such a That's horror. That's good, nerd. man. I am a horror. You are. Nerd. That is cool. <laughs> um, yeah, this I want to say was like. As am I, so I mean, I don't have room to talk. Sometime in the 20s, 23 or 28. I, I don't remember which. Uh, I'll send you a link to it. Uh, it's, it's less a werewolf flick and more a crazy person film, but uh, it was still interesting that. The, it was a it was sold as a werewolf film hmm um i just think right now uh dog men are an example of uh the the wolfman legend that isn't as prevalent in this right. time but something could happen in a couple of years and suddenly it's as big as mothman and then right. there it is again I think Moth Mothman has also just become like such a pop icon as well. Right, true. Yeah. Um, it's I, like think, I try to stay away mileage. from that. Like I if I'm like, you know, reading anything about it, it's like I try to stay away from that. Um, um, <laughs> funny though, like the related to like what we were talking, um, I kind of like just like Google seeing here googling like uh, Chimera and like uh, this article. Like I didn't read the article, but the headline cracks me up. The headline to this article is "Human Non-Human Chimeras." Do we really want to go there? <laughs> 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 and this is like a legit scientific article that somebody wrote, though. Wow. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, you think about uh, the island of Doctor Moreau, and that's what people think when they think of Chimera research. Um. So it's. Uh, it hasn't been touted publicly in a way that is positive that makes sense to people. 
Right. They just see these half man, half pig or whatever, you know, wandering the streets, eating our children. Man, bear, pig. Man, bear, pig. <laughs> My favorite fake uh, cryptid, man, bear, pig from South Park. <laughs> so, so goofy. But I mean, that's a, also a perfect example. Of, yeah. You know how this works. But <laughs> I know it's. You know, but that goes all goes back to like people believing things and then, you know, what's true and what's not true and how you kind of have to like figure that part out for yourself. And honestly, the beautiful thing for me is the the truth of it is not what interests me. Right. So uh, that's been the nice thing about working on Painting the Unexplained is I'm not trying to prove or disprove. I'm just telling you what I found. And yeah, some of it's going to seem fairly unlikely because I'm not just telling you the story and the uh, the instances where people have touted that story is real. I'm, I'm telling you what I found Googling. So if yeah. what I find is mostly people saying, eh, it's bullshit, then that's that's how that folk tale ends. But and that's okay. My interest is not proving or disproving anything. I just want to know what people believe. Right. I want to know what they believe and and what kind of uh, what kind of stories that created and how large that belief is, how it traveled, how it's used, how people invest that belief in their lives. I know. I would say that's how I feel about um, a lot about Mothman too. Like not to bring him up again, but hey, he's back. <laughs> um, but um, like, I I like to like some of it. Yeah, I believe. Mm -hmm. But then there's other stuff. Like I just like to research it and hear about no. it. And like I just like to hear other people's, um, you know, what other people have told, what other people's stories are about. Like, oh, this is what happened to me, or you know, um, or this is what I saw. And I just find it interesting. Whether I take away from it, like, okay, well. I could see that or like, oh, yeah, that's a load of shit. I just don't think it's, I'm just very fascinated by like freaking Mothman. Like, and that kind of like is what you said, Jordan. It's almost become a, I think it's almost become such an icon because of that. It's just, it's, it's just a very fascinating show, story. And the whole thing in itself is crazy. And it's like the deeper you get into that too, and I'm not going to do it. Um, the crazy, <laughs> that's what I think also makes it so interesting. Like the deeper you get into it, the crazier the shit yeah. gets about it. Oh, yeah. So, um, We'll have to go down to the Mothman Museum. I know you've been right. there. You said it was like oh, yeah. funny because they like they had like props from the movie and stuff. Yeah, half of it is really really awesome. It's uh, it's old magazines, it's uh, illustrations, it's it's stuff that belonged to people who were involved in the story. But then half of it is this chapstick was the chapstick used in this scene in Mothman uh, the Mothman prophecies. <laughs> okay, J didn't J need to know uh, that. Yeah, Richard Gere threw this blanket at somebody and they didn't catch it. Oh, that no that's one literally cares. that's I, one of the things there. I watched half um, that movie, I just couldn't get into it. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I the like problem it. is the story doesn't make a movie. Right, right. right. I they, mean, they 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 did what they could, but if right. you know about Mothman or you read a story about it, it's all over the place. It's not meant to be a narrative. No, uh, well, that's, and that's the thing. It's you had they had to make it it's, because it's such the opposite of a narrative. It's very like random and sporadic, and there's no explanation. They had to make up their own explanation too, because there's no like people have theories behind what the explanation of it was, but there's no like nobody knows for sure. Well, like cryptids right. aren't to me. This is like the big difference in like cryptids and like, ghost stories. Ghost stories normally have like a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um and but like with cryptids this is kind of like well this is the event this is what happened it, it's almost like a, like a news report <laughs> a, lot that's of what a lot of stories do have though they do because the the three that i've covered so far work fine as as uh as narratives but mothman just doesn't do that it doesn't and and people think of the the bridge and point pleasant collapsing as the the end of the story that's when it gets really exciting but that doesn't provide you with any end to that story. Right. No, because more stuff it happened after It was just after another that. incident. Right. Um, there's a it, lot it, more stuff that happened afterwards. Right. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot um, of stuff that happened. I mean, there's stuff that happened weird. before that that could have been made a story. The, the bridge is the most famous part of the story. Right. That's what people know That's the most, the most craziest part of it. But Because it was uh, reported, too, in the news, because you know, there's all the deaths. But, yeah. you know, there's a I've lot more to it. Than driven that. over that bridge. 
Um, uh, um, I know uh, Jeff Martin said that his uh, his mom was in Point Pleasant when the bridge went down, and uh, there's terrible. a tattoo artist in uh, has a, a shop off Bethel uh, Bethel Road. Um, he uh, he had two relatives die on that bridge that night. Oh, oh wow. Man. That's and I'm going to be talking to them about the uh, when I do a Mothman episode. Yeah, I'm I excited. For, I'm Mothman. excited for that episode. Yeah, yeah I'm sure that's yeah. going to be really long, extensive. Yeah, that's going to be good. So though. I'm going to watch that one. I'm going to watch the shit out of that one. But um, you know, also on the hand of like cryptids and stuff, um, I think it is important to remember though, like back to like, um, you know, it could some of it could just be stuff that we don't know yet. We haven't fully discovered yet. Um, with that being said, like it is important to point out that there are species that we know of right now that were once thought to be like mythical. Um, for Absolutely. example, narwhals, they used to think were fucking unicorns. Uh-huh. Um, rhinoceroses, they thought like nobody, platypus. Um, I'll say a fucking platypus is a clear example of a cryptid. Right. Like, platypus make, is a cryptid. It makes no sense. It right, it does. Is. It's it, like, and that's just an example. Like we don't, we don't fucking, we think we understand nat- nature, but we fucking don't. Like, you there's actually, a- there's an animal that just this past few years was discovered and it was a, it was considered a cryptid. It's, it looks like a, a hyena, and I think it's a member of the hyena family, but it has, it looks like it has tiger stripes on its, on its hind quarters. Weird. Uh, and I can't remember what it's called, but it was considered, it was literally oh, yes. considered no, a cryptid. I remember what you're talking about. I remember yeah. hearing about this. And, and they found, called, they, they yeah. supposedly found a few of these things. But Komodo dragons were also like considered oh, yeah. to be a cryptid. But, oh, hell, even like you know, giant anacondas. Right. Yeah, like yep. They were, they actually, um, oh no, here it is. I found it. Um, I don't, I'm going to apologize. I don't know how it's pronounced, um, <laughs> but I, I was just scrolling Can through this thing and I just, saw the picture of it, it. And I was like, that's it. It's the, um, it's spelled T-H-Y-L-A-C-I-N-E. And I feel like. Oh, gonna, uh, thylacine. I think thylacine. Is. I was, I was close. I was going to say thylacine. So I was pretty there's close. A, I want to say there's a, a street name. That is less complicated, and I can't. It's the the tiger <laughs> something. I can't remember what they call it. Right. Um. But that literally that was a cryptid, and then they just found a few. Right. And it so was that like, happens a lot. Right. Yeah. And More you know that's a know. possibility because they were cryptid, <clears throat> and then like when nobody knew, like you know, and like there would be sightings. People would like there was like a rumor that like somebody was um breeding like two types of animals to make it. But that turned out to not also be the case because, you know, the recent discovery that we, you know, it, it does exist and it's not a cryptid and it's not something that somebody like genetically made. It's just, you right. know, something natural in um, nature. And, you know, again, that kind of goes back to like, we don't know everything. We're not even close to knowing everything. So no. <laughs> we can't know everything. But we can. That's just what the are you thing. talking about? We're <laughs> we humans. can't know everything. We know everything. We're the smartest species there is. Uh, we are full of shit monkeys. We are. Okay. We are absolutely and uh, we, it, you can't know everything. <laughs> so don't try so hard to. I mean, even information that we readily have available, people don't want to believe because they don't understand it. Right. There are explanations for things out there, and somebody could say, well, you know, there is an explanation for that. Blah, 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 and I wouldn't understand a goddamn thing they said because it's, it's, uh, it's like quantum physics. Uh, qu- you hit a point yeah. when you, as fascinating as I find that, I am not the guy to understand it at a certain level. I am never going to think of all of these original ideas regarding quantum physics because I can't understand it that well. Right. Right. Yeah. And so yeah, you know, trying to learn trying to learn stuff like about ultimate dimensions while someone's talking about quantum physics, I'm like, oh wow, okay, I'm way out of my league. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that and, and that's something that there is evidence there there is evidence for some of the stuff. It's not all theory. There is actual evidence for some quantum physics. And that is something that we are going to talk about. That is that's that's, yep. that's going to be an episode. So <laughs> Excellent. But yeah, Come on, and, and everybody. I, keep, it is I mean, <laughs> we don't understand that, so we might not we might take that with too much salt. 
Right. And which assume we do that, that because we're not bright enough to understand it, which isn't a crime. I'm not bright enough to understand <laughs> right. a lot of quantum physics. Which people get um, so offended by, too, I think. And that's why, like, you know, like we make so we, that's part of the reason we jump to our conclusions is because we're so oh, offended yeah. that, like, what do you mean? I can't understand yeah, the, the ego of the human primate. It was very valuable when we had a, a natural predator, but we no longer have a natural predator. So we don't use it typically for, for much good. Uh, it's like a hammer. A hammer is a fantastic tool. You can build things with it. You can also break someone's skull in with it. There, We're there are terrible uses right for now. a hammer. Um, and the, the ego is the same way. The nice thing about the ego is the ego, the ego propelled you to do this podcast to say that we know enough about this stuff and we're good enough at podcasting that people would want to listen to this. Ego told me that painting the unexplained is something people want to see. Um, there are useful uses for ego, mm -hmm. but assuming that because you're too dumb to know something it doesn't exist is not a good use of ego. No, that's my, um, well, that's like a huge thing for a flat earth. Like the, the oh, whole yeah. flat earth moment, like right there. It's like, I've watched videos and people trying to explain like flat earth. And it's like, you, you it's don't, just a lot of people want to feel smart about. Well, it's like, you don't understand how physics or science works. Right. That, so, that's now, impossible. so now you're like, well, mm -hmm. this, there's no way this could be, this could be true. Cause there's no way this could happen. And it's like, no, no, it does. You just don't understand the, the science and, and the math behind it. Right. <laughs> right. And I, I don't you understand know, like... it either, but like, you know. Right. That's the thing. I understand it enough. But on once again, it's science. On some level, right. you I... lose my comprehension. Right. And that doesn't I mean... mean it's not real. It just means that I'm not in a place to understand it. And, right. And uh, knowing that. That keeps me from saying that it's a lie simply because I can't wrap my head right. around See, it. See, I right. personally I personally love science, which is why like um it's so fun for me to do this podcast because I like I kind of look at stuff with like scientific well, I think all view this, as well. I think all this stuff is just science we don't understand or don't right, know. Right, exactly. It's which like, is kind of what you know yeah. I've been saying. Um but yeah, the the flat earth thing because I'm also like you know, outside of just being into supernatural stuff um, and like reading a lot about that. My other big thing that I'm super into is space. Oh, yeah. um, so like the <laughs> first time I heard like the flat earth thing started to like blow up and people were saying that I was just like, guys, no. I, I know conspiracy no, theorists. Like, this is like, just like, right. And then they'll try to be like, but you think so because they want you to believe that because no, it's a I conspiracy. Know, and I'm like, no. No, I know bad shit, crazy conspiracies. Science think everything is a conspiracy and they're like even flow when it comes to flat earth they're like yeah that's fucking bullshit yeah i know <laughs> science guys like it's like people who believe in like the reptilian and goes like all this stuff like anything you possibly think of a conspiracy theory they believe it and it's like it's like the flat earth they're like the yeah, flat no, what the heck earth it's not like oh it's a conspiracy it's like the flat earth theory legitimately with science and physics does not work yeah, it doesn't work yeah like the flat earth model doesn't work. It they're, they're doesn't sure. work. It's not possible. They're, they're not sure what the we model couldn't is. live <laughs> on a flat earth. Have you uh, have you read any Mary Roach? No. no um if you if you enjoy space stuff, uh she I has do. a book about uh about astronauts mostly, but it's things that you oh, didn't realize. Oh, I have realize. read some of her books. I've read Stiff. Yes, Stiff I've, is great. Uh, she stiff. has one of a Stiff. She has a Bonk, which is about sex. Packing for Mars was the 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 space travel one, and oh, it's stuff that, like uh, how many times uh, Russian astronauts snuck booze up to the oh, space yes, station. Oh yes, I have heard about <laughs> it's, this. That's it's awesome. the American astronauts having to test their uh, their suits. And and the waste filtration system and one of the guys the first time he he pissed or crapped in his suit it just went in his suit and he yes. had to stand in that suit for a week swimming in his own piss oh. and shit. Um, you think about them uh, about the the search for the right person to be an astronaut. There's a reason not many people can right. do that job. Right. Um, uh, and think, this book really points that out. It's a fan. I think you'd I'm really have enjoy. To check it. it. I'm gonna have to check it. But you know, I will say too, like with um the thing with space too. I think my interest in like 
the unknown kind of thing also is what triggered my interest in space because I've got like, you know, I was like, you know, there's the whole idea of UFOs. Obviously, UFOs are associated with outer space. And then that kind of opened that up for me because I wanted to know more about not just like what life is out there, but what goes on in this and it kind of goes back to us, you know, Ralph, you saying that, like, we feel like we have to know everything. Um, that's kind of my view with space because it's so unknown and we really don't know anything about it that I'm just <laughs> so fascinated that, like, yeah. I just cling to it. I'm like, I want to know more about this just big unknown place that we have and we have no clue what's going on out there. Oh, yeah. When I was, I remember third or fourth grade, I sent off for uh satellite photos of Jupiter and its moons. It was it was part of a class project. And when I got those in, that was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. Sure. And I, I was I was like on the verge of tears. I was so enraptured with the yeah. amazing photos of uh, and really close up photos of some of the moons and gas clouds on the surface of Jupiter. And uh it's i think it's beautiful i think it, it physically as 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 uh as visually it's a beautiful thing and the curiosity just it just seasons that for me it right? does it, it makes does it same. better same it's like you here's this thing that you can see but um we will never be able to actually you know most likely with not I wouldn't say with all plants, but there are a lot of plants because of the way that um, they are as far as, um, you know, we can't breathe on them. Right. Like, <laughs> right. We're never going to be <laughs> able to go there. Um, if we set first surface on some of them, we're going to die. Some of them aren't um, even like have a, have a have Right. Ground. So it's, just, it's yes. like just, <laughs> well, the, you know, that. So when it's like, Jupiter is a 24-7, 365 storm. Right, right. that's a perfect then, example. Uh, even like, if it wasn't no amazingly poisonous, <laughs> you were there's still um, die as soon as you got too close. There's an incredible video online. You can find it. I think it's from the 70s or 80s. They have audio recording of Venus. Oh, it wow. Landed, it landed a satellite on Venus, and there's actually audio recording of Venus. I've heard this, And it's yes. fucking incredible. It I is. Mean, I've cool. heard it this. It just sounds like wind for the most part, but the fact that you're listening to, you know. Oh, yeah. Another planet, and you know <laughs> yeah, that's you're listening, what it You're is. listening to another planet. It's pretty oh, incredible. Absolutely. Also, on my laptop right now, right. <laughs> I have the recent sound of Mars right. that was yes. set back by the yes, last I rover. Yes, I heard that one, too. I yeah, also just, love that. Just love I that. love that stuff, yeah. Um, but this is absolutely like, in the way, because this is, this space thing is related to a lot of the mentality of cryptids, I feel like, um, in the sense that, like, space is, we don't even know how many, you know, we know our solar system, um, but in general, as far as the universe goes, like, we don't even know how many planets are out there, um, how many solar systems, how many, you know, how many places, um, as far as galaxies, stars, you know, we don't know all of that. We don't even close right. to know that, and that's kind of an example as, like, what the earth is but on a smaller scale um we don't know everything oh, yeah. it's, that it's we the beauty have. of mystery right right and i think it's very it almost it's it's very makes us look very stupid and silly to sit there and pretend like we do like but i think there's uh, a romance to the mystery right there is oh, yeah. there is i would say that definitely. totally Definitely. But then again, you know, back to, you know, how we briefly touched UFOs, too. I feel like that's also an important thing to keep in mind with us knowing so little about the universe and what goes on in space and, you know, all the other planets that are out there. I think it would be very naive of us to think like we are the sole planet that has life. It's just mm -hmm. us. We're not. We're so special. We're not special. We like, found life for like on a, on a volcano underwater. Right. You know, it's like, <laughs> right. Oh yeah. And the most oh, the snails. Those yeah, volcanic the most, snails. Yeah, the most uninhabitable place on Earth. They've found life. It's like okay. They just discovered it was the deepest they've drilled in an ocean bed, and it broke through the to this like underground ocean, and they found a big sponge, and on that sponge lives millions of little things yeah. and they have no idea how in hell they can live that far down in the water and and not to mention manage to get all their nutrients from this right. sponge there you go and it's beautiful they have video footage of it it's incredible uh, also back to the volcanic snails though the other thing about them is like if anybody hasn't seen them google them because they also look really weird they like, look really awesome they yeah. do like and i say yeah weird in an awesome way like 
which again goes back to like, you know, us not knowing something and seeing something we don't know and like relating that to cryptid. Like I could see if somebody that was not a scientist ran across one of these, they'd be like, what is this motherfucker? This thing is weird. And like trying to make it be like, it's a monster snail or it's an alien (laughs) or it's like some kind of deformed thing. But it's just a snail that lives in the volcano. Well, the the reason I think that owls keep popping up as explanations for uh, for cryptids Especially is because I, mean, I don't know if yeah. you've ever been wandering through the woods and happened upon an owl, but most of the time it, it's happened to me a few times because I used to live in southern Louisiana out in the woods. Um, they're bigger than you think they yep, are. Yep. Yeah, they this, are. So this recently <laughs> happened to they're Keith and I. And they're all really weird looking too. Right. Oh, the yeah. closer they you are, stuff. the weirder they look. Because Keith and I went um, for a walk and we were down by the Westerville Reservoir. And there's like these little peninsula islands that like go out that people like go and fish off. And like, you know, sometimes when it doesn't rain and then the, you know, the water goes down and you can, there was an owl out on one of them and it was like there's a fell off, a tree that fell over and it was like sitting in it and we could only kind of see like the shadow of it at first and we were like what the hell is that and then we got closer and we looked at it and it was it was a massive fucking owl right. and we were just like that's insane because it was like as you said it was way bigger than we thought it was and when you look at them at a distance and you only see the shadow figure because the closer we got we could tell but at a distance they look fucking creepy oh yeah And it's even creepier when it's staring at you, too, and you don't know what it is. Because that was creepy. It was like staring at us. And we're like, what? What is that? And then we're like, oh, it's it's an owl. Right. So uh, Ralph's show is called Painting the Unexplained. Uh, You can find it online at paintingtheunexplained.com. Search for it on YouTube and on Facebook. Uh, The artwork is absolutely incredible. The video of themselves, the editing style is really fun. Um the videos bring a lot of inf- a lot of information, but they're also really engaging at the same time. Um, you can find us online at thespookydoor.com. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Just search for us using the Spooky Door. Uh, we want to thank Ralph for being on the show today. We had an incredible time uh, conversating. Thank about, you for having me. Of course, we're talking about all kinds of stuff. We'll probably bring you back on after you do some more episodes, and we can talk about more crazy, weird shit that's out there. Absolutely. So once again, well, and we have we have some field trips planned. Oh yeah, we talked. And I'm going to mention this on your show because it's the coolest thing I've ever heard. There is uh, for we were talking about Dogman. Well, I'm doing an episode on Dogman that features your story, as well as the history of that interest in Wolfmen. But Jordan and I are going to visit a graveyard that supposedly is of a family of werewolves and. It's it's supposedly a haunted graveyard. That's right, werewolf ghosts. <laughs> I've never heard of that before, and but I am okay. so intrigued. And Jordan and I are going to go, and Jordan insists on well, going at night. Ashley's so going to go. We never see too. you again after that. Oh, oh absolutely. Yes. Yeah, All right. This more I didn't than know about this. I didn't even know this exists, but now that is where's, it where's bad? It at? What does it say about me that like? I'm excited about this. Yeah, we're going to visit. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> where is this? Again? But, uh, it's outside Cleveland. Um, oh, I can't shit, remember exactly far. where. Uh, I had to look up the research, but but we are going to go to a graveyard that is supposedly haunted by ghost werewolves, I'm and I could not so be excited. more <laughs> giddy. Yes. yes. We'll have to figure out when we're going to do that. Absolutely. All right. Well, I want to thank Ralph for being on the show. Once again, my name is Jordan. With me is always Ashley, and journey with us next time through the spooky door. <laughs>